letter in the paper for their merch. With a big black fancy border. Yeah, and then we're gonna kill him, you idiot. There you go. What's wrong with you? It's a bad idea, Ike. We should just clear out. Well, clear out, we're done, Phil. You're gonna mind the <laughs> Cowboys were looking for a fight. Now you got it. Fuck your hands, boys. We're here for your kids. Oh, man, I don't want that. Frank McLowry, dead. Tom McLowry, dead. 19-year-old Billy Clanton, dead. And that was it, over before it ever started. Two months after this gunfight, Virgil Earp was ambushed outside the Crystal Palace Saloon. Three shotguns went off, but he still refused to die. Crippled up pretty bad, Virgil wandered the west until death found him in Nevada in 1905. Not as lucky was Wyatt's kid brother Morgan. He was shot in the back and killed, playing a game of pool up on Allen Street. Morgan died at midnight, March 19, 1882, his brother Wyatt's birthday. Now in 1887, the year this whole town began to fall apart, the two main causes of this gunfight died hundreds of miles apart from each other. <clears throat> that summer, trying to put together a new gang up in northern Arizona, Ike Clanton was shot and killed by a mail order detective. <laughs> Not long after that, after a lifetime of drinking and smoking, well, tuberculosis caught up with yours truly up in Colorado. I don't care to talk about it. <laughs> Wyatt Earp was the last man standing out of all this. He'd spend his days traveling. Wyatt made his way from Idaho to Alaska, finally ending up in Jazz Age Hollywood, searching for another tombstone and the chance to get things right again. He never would find it. Wyatt died in Los Angeles in 1929, just ahead of his 81st birthday. His final words? Suppose. Suppose. And that, folks, is our show. We hope you enjoy it.